Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I've been working on cutting a new gear for a case steam traction engine for a viewer up in North Georgia uh, that had an original one that had busted some teeth out of this. We've got the gear, the new gear made, but we're not quite done with this project. Um, it's actually got this bevel gear that is pressed onto the end of it, and then there's a keyway in here that keys the two gears together, and then there's two pins that pin it all together. I need to get this thing attached. That's today's job. That's what we're gonna work on. Let's get in here and get it knocked out. So this is the original gear that we're replacing. As you can see, we're missing a bunch of teeth on it. This is a new gear that I have made. Um, this original gear was made from cast iron. The new gear was also made from cast iron. In this case, we used Durabar, which is a extruded cast iron product, but it is cast iron. Um, when I posted some pictures of this over on some of my social media platforms, had lots of people asking, hey, what about the pinholes in the keyway? And uh, that's an important part, and no, we hadn't done that yet. Uh, but this bevel gear uh, was mounted in here, and there is a key on the back side of this bevel gear that fits into this key up here. And then there's also two pins that was one of the pins that basically went through there, through the gear and pinned it in place as well. Now, I, I noticed whenever we took the gear off that this bevel gear has the same number of teeth as the spur gear, and uh, they were in alignment with one another, roughly. I mean, it's not perfect alignment, but they were in alignment with one another. I'm not, I don't think that that matters in this case, but we're going to line them back up as close as we can. Uh, like I said, I, it's, it's not a critical timed uh, piece by any means, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna put it back the way we were. First thing I need to do is get a key cut in here uh, for this to fit down into. Uh, this is a press fit. Uh, we will probably heat this gear up just a little bit, expand it, press it down in there. Once we do that, I'm just gonna come in here and we'll just drill and use the same holes here. And um, this is one of the original pins. I'll probably use some dowel pins uh, to pin this gear back in place. That's the game plan. So uh, we're gonna start by cutting this keyway. And I think to do that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over to the milling machine. First, we're gonna figure out exactly where it needs to be. We'll go over to the milling machine and I'm just gonna cut a little slot in there. Uh, this, this, this width, and it'll be a little bit deeper than that, but it'll allow that to drop down into it. This one was done a little bit differently, but uh, it's, either way, it's gonna work. It's, we just need to get a, a, a slot in there for that. So let me get my timing worked out here. So I won't, um, again, these teeth to kind of line up. So I'm just gonna kind of place that gear more or less where it needs to be. And I'm gonna come around over here and just mark where that uh, that key needs to be cut, and then we'll go over to the middle machine and, and, and cut it out. My next step I need to do is get my uh, mill centered up on this uh, bore. Um, really, I only need it in one axis, and I'm just, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm gonna show using a coaxial indicator. I haven't used this thing in a while. It's kind of a neat little indicator to use. So I've got this set up on the mill, and I've got my, Pete's down here where it's gonna be sweeping around. So I'll turn the mill on and you can see it's sweeping around inside that bore. Uh, and when you just hold this in your hand, you can see the dial moving around inside that bore. What I wanna do is I wanna get that needle where it's basically not moving at all. And this is a little bit of trial and error. You just kind of move your tables around and Okay, I'm moving my tables and my needles are getting actually farther away. So I'm gonna come back the other way. And uh, I wanna get it to where it basically moves down to the minimum amount of run out in that direction. I'm moving the table away from me. And all right, I kind of went to a point and it started moving farther. So now I'm gonna come in on the other axis and again, I'm gonna move it out one direction and let's see what happens. Okay, my needles are getting closer together. Now they're getting farther away.
I think I need to go back to the other axis now. I got it within a foul. So it's actually reading in half thou increments, so that's really pretty darn close right there. Alright, I that's probably gonna be as I'm gonna just play with this other one real briefly and see if I can get it any better. That's probably about as good as I can get it right there. That's within a thousandth of being on center. So I'm gonna lock my tables down and we're gonna call that good enough. So just one way of uh, finding the center of a, of a bore, uh, coaxial indicator. So this key that we've got to cut in here is an oddball size for whatever reason. I measured it, so it's 400 thousandths wide. Uh, which is not really a nominal fractional size that matches anything, uh, but no big deal, we can make it match. I've got a uh, 3 8 inch uh, end mill in here, which is 0.375, so it's 25 thousandths undersized. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, we're gonna go down the center, we'll mill in, and then we're gonna move over 12 and a half thousandths in each direction, and that will get that to 400 thousandths uh, deep, or 400 thousandths uh, uh, wide, rather. Uh, as far as depth, uh, I need to figure out how deep I need to go. Let me go measure that real quick. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna unlock the table in this direction. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna basically just touch off flat and then I will uh, I'm gonna zero my Z axis, which is the up and down. It needs to be 400 thousandths deep. So I'm gonna come up 400 thou, it's one, two, three, and right there is about where we need to be on the depth. And we need to go in, it's a quarter of an inch deep, plus I got the radius I got to deal with, which will be half of the three eighths. So I need to go in about 425 thousandths total on the depth. So let's go ahead and get our mill going here. I'm gonna come in here until it touches off. Right there, I'm gonna zero out in that axis. And like I said, we need to go to about 425,000 uh, deep. So we'll just cut straight in. About 200. Three hundred. Four hundred. And we're four twenty five. All right, now I'm gonna move the table over 12 and a half thousandths of an inch. Right there. And I'm gonna go into that same depth. Just widening it out a little bit. Uh, 
right. Now I'll come back to my zero in the center, and I'm going to go 12 and a half thousandths in the other direction. We'll do the same thing. That key should be cut. We're getting ready to press the two gears together. I am going to put a little bit of um, Loctite in here. This is just a removable blue Loctite, just a little bit. Um, it's not gonna hurt anything. And we'll hopefully uh, Make sure these gears stay together real good. I'm going to put a little bit on the outside of the other one as well. And I'm going to come in here and line that key up as well as I can. And we'll take the Arbor Press and we're going to press these together. And it's pressing nice and tight. It's going together, but it is, it is tight. All right. Let's get that last little bit. All right, we are pressed together. That looks good. So the gear is coming along nice. We got it pressed together. Um, last step here is we need to put in the dowel pins. There are two dowels that also are pinned in here. You can see the original holes that these were in. Um, interestingly, this was what came out of it. And I believe that what they did here is they just uh, cut the end off of a shank of a drill bit and use that as a dowel pin. Uh, I'm not going to reuse these. I'm going to get proper dowel pins for it. Uh, I thought I had the right length. It's a 5 8 diameter, but, and I thought I had the right length over in my tool cabinet, but I'm going to have to order some the right length. So we're just going to basically go down the, the original holes that they drilled here. I'm going to drill this uh, one size under, uh, 5 what did I say, 5 16 or yeah, 5 16 diameter, which is the pin. So we'll We'll drill these out at uh, 19 64ths, and then I will take a reamer, and I've got a I've got a reamer that is a half a thou under 5 sixteenths. We'll press that in there, and then we can take the dowel pins, which are going to be hardened, and we'll press those in, and it'll be a press fit to go in there, and then that will give us. I guess they've just put these in here for some added. Um, keying. I'm not exactly sure why it needed to have a key down there plus the dowel pins, but I'm not going to argue with them. We're just going to put it back in the same way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get these drilled out, but I'm going to wait in, in until I get my dowels to, uh, to actually pin it back together. So maybe a day or two. You guys won't know it on the video. It'll be all right here together, but uh, uh, that's kind of my game plan. So let me go get these drilled out and uh, we'll be ready to ream those and uh, put the dowels in and be done with this. I'm over here at my little drill press and we're going to go ahead and drill and ream the holes for these um, dowel pins that will also hold this. Now this was originally had the dowel pins in there. I'm just going to line up on the existing holes in the bevel gear that we're reusing and we're going to drill into the gear that I made. I've got a uh, 1964 drill bit in here. It's one size under five eighths and then we're going to use a reamer to take it to the final size and this is a undersized reamer so this is a half a thousandth under five eighths and that will give us a press fit for those uh, dowel pins to go in there so they shouldn't come out so that's uh like i said we're just going to kind of go right down this same little hole that was in there before and we're just going to drill that out Our dowel pins are, I think, three quarters of an inch long, so uh, make sure we drill down 
Playing deep enough for them to clear. That should be good. I actually got a little mark on my drill bit. You guys probably can't see it, but I, I can kind of watch it and catch that depth. And here we go on number two. Take our drill bit out and we'll put our reamer in here. I may have to lower my table down just a little bit. Now on this reamer, I'm using just a little dab of anchor lube to give it a little lubrication. Um, I like this anchor lube I use a lot of times for tapping, but it's also good for any kind of lubrication like this. It just helps protect that tooling. And we'll just run that reamer right down through there. And that's gonna cut that hole to a very precision diameter, which is what a reamer is good for. I'm going to clean those chips off. We'll go around to the other side and we'll do the same thing. Just a little dab of anchor lube. And here we go. All right, we should be ready to uh, press our dial pins in. Final step here, I'm over at the Arbor Press. I wanna press in the little dowel pins and this should be a press fit. I am gonna use a little Loctite on them just because, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and press these in real quick. Um, let's go ahead and put just a little dab of Loctite in there. And I'll put my dowel pin right down in there. I'm going to use a punch to kind of get it down in between those gear teeth. And that presses in nice and easy. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side. A little dab of Loctite. We'll uh, put that in there. Use a punch here to press it down with. Get that lined up better. There we go. Press it nice and home. And that's at the bottom. Got our two pins ready to roll. And this gear is done. And just like that, we're all done with this project. I'm gonna let my uh, customer know that this thing is ready to pick up. I actually told him we were close the other day. I think he's gonna come down tomorrow and pick this up. But uh, one gear all finished and ready to go, he should be able to put this back on his engine and be back in business. So. There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this little project. Uh, this was a fun one for me. I enjoy making gears. I enjoy anything steam related. So uh, it was a treat to be able to, to work on this and, and make this gear for, for the gentleman up there to get his engine going. I hope he'll send me some pictures or videos of that uh, steam traction engine running. I'd just like to see it uh, knowing I had a little, little piece in uh, keeping, it, keeping it alive. So with that guys, we're gonna sign off. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are really greatly appreciated and really, really help out with the algorithms on YouTube to help kind of get things, uh, uh, my, my channel out there in front of other people. So, you know, hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Both of those really help. 
Um, if you haven't already, like I said, subscribe. Uh, and as always, a big, huge thank you to the subscribers, I mean, to the supporters of the site who support financially uh, through PayPal, uh, through Patreon, et cetera. That really, really helps me out. And it really allows me to take the time that I need to to make the videos uh, to bring to you guys. I mentioned before, it doubles the amount of time when I got the camera running in the shop to do anything in the shop. And uh, that little bit of extra revenue that comes in through Patreon and PayPal and et cetera like that, uh, as well as a little bit of revenue I get off of the YouTube videos themselves, which isn't a whole lot, um, it all makes it worthwhile for me to take that time and do it. So thank you very much for those that participate in that. And uh, with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.